Hi folks, HR Funk here. Out on the range for part two of my review of this Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 4 inch 10 millimeter pistol. And yes, that is a mouthful. <laughs> in part one of this video, I was back in the shop and I conducted a detailed review of the features and characteristics of this handgun. If you missed that, I would encourage you to go back and watch it because in this video, I'm just going to be shooting this handgun and seeing how it performs. In just a couple of minutes, I'm going to start out with an accuracy test with the M&P 2.0 10 millimeter. And I debated back and forth as to whether or not to conduct this test with or without an optic mounted. And I thought maybe I should go with just the factory supplied iron sights, maybe not. And I finally decided if anyone was interested in purchasing the optics ready version of this pistol, they would probably like to see the performance out here on the range with an optic installed. So I am going to be shooting through these drills with my Hollow Sun 507C attached to the pistol. Ammunition for today was provided by House of Pain. I'm going to be firing their 180 grain polymer round nose flat point bullets or round nose flat point load with a rated velocity of 1300 feet per second. So some good energy behind that ammunition. I'm also going to try out some of their 165 grain jacketed hollow points which are rated also at 1300 feet per second. So you'll see both of those perform out here. Now I have not yet zeroed this optic. So my plan is to start out and fire a five shot group. I'm going to hold the same point of aim for all five shots. We'll take a look at the group size, then I'll make a sight correction and we'll see how it looks when I fire the second type of ammunition with the sights that should be zeroed at that point. So here we go. And first up is going to be the 180 grain round nose flat point poly coated load from this distance of 15 yards. Let's see how it does. I think the recoil got me a little bit that time. And there is some stout recoil from this 180 grain load. All right. I got a pretty good four shot group. Very first shot was closest to the middle of the target. I'll make a sight correction and then I'll try the 165 grain load. So I'm going to chalk this first shot up to just being the first shot ever out of the pistol. These four are within just over an inch. This is probably about an inch and a quarter center to center from that distance of 15 yards. So decent accuracy there from the M&P 2.0 10 millimeter. Now with that sight correction, I'm hitting about, about three and a half inches high and a good inch or a little bit more to the left. So I'll make a quick correction, then I'll come back and I'll try that second load. And I've made that sight correction. So now let's try the 165 grain jacketed hollow point load. And we'll see what the accuracy looks like with it. That shot did not feel good. Let's go take a look at the target. And I've got three shots that are in about the same size group as the four shots up above. So a little over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, center to center. But then I have two shots down here touching that open that group size up to about two and a half inches. So definitely decent accuracy for defensive purposes but the M&P is not going to win any matches, which doesn't surprise me because the M&P pistols historically have not had absolute pinpoint accuracy. They've had good defensive accuracy. So with that being said, let's move on to some defensive drills and see how the pistol does in those. And on we go to some controlled pairs from a distance of five yards from the target. By the way, I'm starting these drills with the magazine fully loaded with 15 rounds of that 180 grain 
round nose flat point poly coated ammunition and a round in the chamber. So I'm going to be testing the functioning of the handgun with a fully loaded magazine as we cycle through that ammunition column. And again, I'm starting out with controlled pairs. So here we go. And the recoil impulse from the M&P with that 180 grain ammunition is significant to the point that it's affecting my accuracy a little bit. Now I am hitting a little bit low. I think this is due to some offset with this sight. I raised my last shot up to about here and put it dead center in the heart. So I'll try to compensate for that as I go on through the rest of the drills also. But again, that is some substantial recoil I'm getting out of this pistol with that ammunition. Next, also from five yards, let's try a multiple adversary drill and see how that goes. So I believe this was my first shot, right dead center in the spine, just clipped the bottom of the heart, so a good shot there. I've got three shots over here. This is a good one. These are good, both going to be in the lung, so decent shots over there. Came back over here, clipped the bottom of the lung, and pulled this one low. And this could be me anticipating some of that recoil, because I'm not sure why I'm continuing to hit low. I was holding my point of aim up in this area on both of these targets. So when I get back to a little bit greater distances, I'll keep an eye on that. And I think that's me. Or if I think maybe it's something going on, maybe the sight's not quite zeroed yet. And uh, as a matter of fact, my sight is loose. <laughs> so let me tighten that down and see if that makes a difference. Okay, folks, I've got the sight tightened back down. I think I've got all the issues corrected. So I'm going to reshoot that multiple adversary drill and see if the results this time around are better. And when I tightened the sight back down and checked the zero again, it was hitting very low. So those low shots that we were seeing on the target were a result of that sight, but that does underscore how important it is with a handgun that has this much recoil to make sure you use Loctite on your optic mounting screws to make sure nothing loosens up. I really did not expect it to get that loose that quickly. In fact, uh, by the time that I checked the sight and you saw how loose it was, I had fired, what, maybe 10 or 15 rounds through it, and it already had loosened up to the point that I was getting some very sketchy accuracy. So again, take two on the multiple adversary drill. And that was a little more like it. I've got three nicely centered shots right there. The first shot and also the fifth and sixth shot. I've also got two of them pretty much dead center in the heart here. One of them just a little bit low and off to the left in the lung. I'm sure that was me. And again, trying to manage this pistol and keep those follow-up shots where you want them is a little bit of a challenge, but that looks a lot better that time around than the first time through that drill. And the sight is still tight. So now, time to move back a little bit farther, and I'll try some failure drills from a distance of seven yards. See how they go. Two shots on the heart, two shots just above the heart in the lungs, and the two head shots are good, just clipping the spine on the way through the lower brain. And if you've seen me shoot that drill over the years, you probably are noticing that I'm shooting it slower. There is definitely more recovery time during the shots with this heavier recoil that I'm getting from the 10 millimeter. Even so, all of those are good effective shots. So now let's move on to 15 yards, and I'll try five shots to the body from that distance.
I marked the impacts for the shots from that 15 yards with the green stickers in case you couldn't see them on the dark t-shirt of this target. But the group is pretty well centered in the chest. It's not the best group that I ever shot from that distance, but this guy, considering the impact energy of these bullets, is going to be having a very, very bad day with five shots that well centered in the chest. These two probably clipped the heart. This one might have went just above it. This one, this one, and this one are certainly all in the lungs, so he's having a very, very bad day. Now I'll move back to a distance of 25 yards and try this same drill from there. So here we go. Five shots to the body from 25 yards. And those shots from 25 yards are marked with the red stickers. And I can basically cover that group with my hand. Again, that's not the best group that I ever shot from that distance. But as I said earlier in the video, the M&P is not a match pistol. It is accurate enough for defensive purposes. And that is certainly an accurate enough group for defensive purposes. So now we've arrived at the moment of truth. Is the M&P 2.0 4 inch 10 millimeter a seven yard tack driver. I'm going to put a tack in the target, load three rounds of ammunition in the pistol, back off to a distance of seven yards, and we'll find out. All right, folks, here we go. Is this a tack driver? Let's find out. Just a little high on that first shot. High and slightly to the left. So let's see if I can drive it out of there with shot number two. Still high and a little too far to the right. So let's see if I can bring it down a little more and split the difference between those two shots. Yes! On the third shot, the M&P 2.0 4-inch 10mm is a tack driver. So, final thoughts on this pistol, folks. First off, I think there are two parts to my final thoughts. One is on the pistol itself, and on one hand, this handgun is everything I've come to expect of a Smith & Wesson M&P. It points well, it's comfortable in the hand, it is accurate enough for its intended purpose, and it is 100% reliable. I did not expect to have any functioning problems when I came out here. I don't remember ever having functioning problems with any of my M&Ps, and this one was no different. The new trigger really doesn't do anything for me. I noticed as I was shooting my way through these drills, and even on the tack shot there at the end, I just don't think it's that good. A lot of people really like it. They're convinced it's better because it has a more straight design and because it's got the blade and the trigger and all of that. And I just don't think it feels that great. It feels functionally okay for defensive use, but for anything where you're trying to place a really precise shot, I would rather have my old 1.0 M&P for that. Even so, it was a tack driver. So again, it's accurate enough for what uh, you would need to do with it. The second part to my final thoughts has to do with this specific M&P at a weight of 24.8 ounces, if I remember correctly, unloaded with no magazine, chambered for the 10 millimeter cartridge. And it is not a pleasant handgun to shoot. It's not tremendously controllable. As I was shooting my way through those drills and got back a little bit farther distances, seven yards, 15 yards, and so forth, you probably noticed that my shoot, shooting slowed down because as I said earlier in the video, my follow-up shots were taking a little bit more time for me to reacquire my target and all that. The 
muzzle blast and the overall recoil, if you're not somebody who does a lot of shooting with very potent handgun cartridges, you're probably just not going to like it. I have a M&P 45 at home. Now it is the five inch version, I believe, which is a much more comfortable handgun to shoot than this 10 millimeter version. I also have a 10 millimeter 1911 and I have a 10 millimeter Smith & Wesson 1076, both of which are substantially heavier than this handgun. And they are both much more comfortable to shoot with full power 10 millimeter loads than this handgun was. So in the end, if you're interested in a Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeter, and you don't mind spending a lot of money on ammunition and working to be able to master that recoil and to be able to put shots where you want them in defensive use, then this might be the handgun for you. And I don't think I ever mentioned the MSRP and I don't have it with me out here. I believe it was somewhere around $5.99 or something like that. I'll flash it on the bottom of the screen. So street price on this pistol is probably going to be significantly less than that. But I don't know. I'm, I'm not blown away by this pistol. I'm not going to be hounding House of Pain Armament to sell this one to me. I think I'm going to stick with my 9mm and 45 and 40 Smith & Wesson chambered M&Ps. And for 10mm, I'm going to step up to those heavier handguns that I mentioned a little while ago. Anyway, that's my review for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 7% off your purchase from Optics Planet. Also, remember the discount code from House of Pain. And again, thank you to House of Pain Armament and Munition for supplying me with this handgun for the review today and for providing the ammunition that I used during this video. If you go to House of Pain, you can use my discount code there, which is HRFUNK10, and that'll save you 10% on your purchase from House of Pain. And also, don't forget the Target sponsor for the channel, and I had two more of their Targets out here today. Go to Targets online, check out their inventory, and see if they have anything that's going to meet your Target needs. Until next time, folks, as always, good shooting. Bye-bye.